Now this video is a continuation of another video I've created on Vesper Theory, a basic introduction you could find on YouTube. So we're going to focus on the molecular geometry of the trigonal bipyramidal structure. Now this structure has a central atom and it has five other atoms attached to it. So you have one on top and one on the bottom. Now the bond angle between those two atoms is 180. Now there's three other atoms that you need to worry about, which looks like this. Now those three atoms, they have a trigonal planar shape. If you focus on drawing those three atoms, it would look like this. And so the bond angle between these three is 120. And the bond angle between these two is 90. So there's three angles that you need to know for the trigonal bipyramidal shape. That angle is 90. Between these two is uh, 180. And the three in the middle, that's going to be 120. A good example of the trigonal bipyramidal structure is PCl5, phosphorus pentachloride. So in a structure, phosphorus is at the center. We have two chlorine atoms in, let's call this the Z direction. And then we have three chlorine atoms in the XY plane. Each chlorine atom contains three lone pairs. So the total number of valence electrons in this structure is actually 40. And so that's one example of a trigonal bipyramidal structure. Now there's some other structures that you need to be familiar with. The next one is the seesaw. Now, you can get a list of all the molecular geometries and their shapes that you need to know if you go to Google Images and type in molecular geometry. I believe it's the first one in the upper left, and you should see all of the geometries that you need to know. And it's nicely listed for you, so if you uh, print out that page, I think it's going to help you uh, tremendously. Now, in the seesaw structure, you have a central atom, and it has a lone pair with four other atoms. You can draw it like this or sometimes you might see it written this way. So that's the seesaw molecular geometry. And one good example of it is sulfur tetrafluoride. In this structure, sulfur contains one lone pair and it's attached to four fluorine atoms. And each of those fluorine atoms also contains lone pairs, but they contain three instead of one. And so that's one example of the seesaw molecular structure. Next up, we have the T-shaped molecular geometry. So what do you think this structure looks like? Well, it actually does have a T-shaped structure. So one way you can draw it is having the center atom placed like that and there's three other atoms attached to it and attached to the center atom there are two lone pairs so that's the structure of the T-shaped molecule and you could see the the T-shaped uh, in the molecule now granted you can also draw it this way too if you want so there's different ways in which you can orient the molecule but this looked more like a T-shape. So what's one example of the T-shape structure? This includes iodine trifluoride. By the way, for those of you who may want to know how to determine the number of Lewis structures in a certain molecule, here's a technique that I use. First, I count the valence electrons. Iodine have uh, seven, and fluorine has seven as well. 
Now 7 times 3 is 21, plus 7, that's 28. Now fluorine wants to have 8 electrons. So there's 3 fluorine atoms. So each fluorine is going to have 8, so times 3, that's going to be 24. So right now I have a total of 16 electrons. Remember, each bond represents 2 electrons. Now, in order to get 28, I need to add two lone pairs. So now it adds up to 28. That's how I know that there's two lone pairs. And as long as this atom is not hydrogen, these atoms will always have 8. So using the multiple of 8 rule, looking at 28, I try to find the highest multiple of 8 just under 28, which is going to be 24. So if you subtract 28 by 24, this gives you the number of electrons that is on the center atom. So four electrons equate to two lone pairs. And that's how you could determine how many lone pairs should be on the center atom. And so this structure is the T-shaped molecular structure. So IF3 is one example of it. Now the next important structure that you need to know is the octahedral molecular geometry. So you can have an atom at the center with six other atoms surrounding it. Now the bond angle between these two atoms is 90 degrees because 360 divided by 4 is 90. These are equally spaced in the same plane. And the bond angle between these two is also 90. So you can view this as being in the z direction and this as being in the xy plane. One example of the octahedral molecular structure is sulfur hexafluoride. In this structure, sulfur is attached to six fluorine atoms. And so it looks like that. And you could easily tell if it's going to be octahedral. If you see an element with six other atoms attached to it, and there's no lone pairs on the central element, then it has an octahedral structure. Now the next one we need to talk about is the square pyramidal structure. So the general features of this structure is that attached to the central atom, you have five other atoms on it. So it's very similar to the octahedral structure. The only difference is one of the atoms has been replaced with a lone pair. So instead of having six atoms attached to the central atom, as in the case of an octahedral structure, you now have five atoms attached to the center atom with one lone pair. So an example of this molecular geometry includes the iodine tetrafluoride, I mean, not tetra, but pentafluoride molecule. So in it, you have iodine at the center with five fluorine atoms attached to it. And on the iodide atom, you have uh, one lone pair on it. And so it has a square pyramidal molecular geometry. Now the next one on the list is the square planar structure. Now it's going to have six things attached to it, like the octahedral structure, but two of those atoms is replaced with lone pairs. So you're going to have four atoms attached to it with two lone pairs. So there's going to be one lone pair on the top and one on the bottom. So that's the square planar molecular structure. And xenon tetrafluoride has that structure. So xenon is going to be at the center, and it's attached to four fluorine atoms. And xenon is going to have two lone pairs, one above and one below. So that's the square planar uh, molecular geometry. So now you know the most important structures that you need to know for your next test. And if you want to find more chemistry videos, just check out my playlist. And when you get a chance, go to Google Images, type in molecular geometry, 
and you should see a page that's going to give you all the structures that you need.